Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to talk about broadcasting and how to use it to uh, improve performance in the code for avoiding loops especially. So broadcasting is an operation that allows you to uh, use functions on vectors and matrices of different sizes. For example, a simple broadcasting operation would be the multiplication between a matrix and a scalar, which is a, just a number. So if you do a scalar times matrix multiplication, all the elements in the matrix will be multiplied by the scalar. So for example, if you want to multiply a matrix, let's say a 4 by 4 matrix of, let's say, random numbers by a vector. Let's say this is a, a four element column vector. The way to do this, the broadcasting operation is simple to request an ele element wise multiplication of B times A. So this basically what it does is it multiplies each column of the matrix A by this vector. You can also, for example, so A again is the same matrix, A element wise times B, is, or now it does the same, but for example, B transposed, it would multiply each row by this vector. This allows to basically avoid having to write a loop that goes through the columns or the rows of this matrix. It is also very important because it allows you to uh, save memory. For example, the vector B is not copied many times. It's used always the same vector to loop over the columns or rows of, or the matrix. But this loop is done in the internal C++ in which Octave is written. So this is much faster that, than if you would try to write the loop yourself. So the usefulness of broadcasting operations will be demonstrated by some example. So I, I made this a small program for which we will go through line by line. So the idea is I'm making up data because I'm going to use that data in future videos to uh, show plotting options. What I'm going to do is fabricate some spectra that could would be UVB spectra that would represent experimental UVB spectra from substances. For this is for people who are not in the chemistry, um, in the chemistry area or the biology area. For people who do other type of stuff, you could consider this just signal, just functions, which are uh, are going to be plot in 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 one se in one plot. So basically, lambda, it is the wavelength. I'm just defining a a column vector. So basically, this is what I get. Then I'm going to define three sets of uh, two element row vectors, which are the line width of the two signals. These signals, the spectra will be Gaussian functions. Then the positions and then the intensities. So intensities, for example, is just two numbers. These are row vectors and this is on purpose. So what I'm doing here in the pure spectra uh, line is to simply generate a, a broadcasting operation that generates two Gaussian functions. So the exponential, uh, the argument of the exponential is the lambda, which is the x value minus the positions. That's element wise squared 
and that's element wise divided by the line width square. So this function is simply the, the function of a of a exponential uh, Gaussian function. But the important part here is that the lambda is a column vector that has around 700 elements or 701 elements. But positions and line width and intensities are two element row vectors. So when we, for example, subtract lambda minus positions, we get this uh, 701 times 2 matrix, where basically uh, a broadcasting operation has, a, has occurred. So when we square element-wise, we are performing an operation on, on this same matrix, but when we divide again by a row vector, it will again perform a broadcasting operation. But then it will not change the size of the larger matrix. So it will basically divide by the line width square each row of the resultant matrix. So, and basically this will happen again when we multiply by the intensity. So what we will get is these two spectra that now we, are, we can plot, for example. So this is basically the two spectra that we plot. These are just made up data. So what we are going to do now is define and use broadcasting operations again. So we are going to define a number of spectra that will go in between these two pure spectra. So I ch ch chose the value of 30, but it could be anything. It could also be 20. So what we are going to do is first define a concentrations matrix that's basically made out of zeros. It will be a, a matrix with two rows and 20 columns. So what we are going to do next is fill up the first row with this uh, sigmoidal type of function. So basically, what we are defining here is an is a interval, a range that goes from 1 to 20, minus 15, which is a middle point. I sh actually, I should choose another value, minus 10. And this is inside an exponential, decreasing exponential, and this function 1 over 1 plus a de uh, decreasing exponential is the formula or the simplified formula for a sigmoidal, an S-shaped function. So if we do this, for example, we can plot over 20. So what we see here, concentrations, is just this sigmoidal function. So if we, for example, change this value by 2, for example, and we plot again, we'll see now the S-shape is more uh, steep than before. So this is just made up data that could uh, exemplify the concentration of one of the species that gives one of the spectra below. So we go back here. I'm going to change this by 10. I'm going to change this by 2. So what we are making is making up the concentration of one of the species. And the concentrations 2, uh, the row the second row of the concentrations will be simply 1 minus the first row. So basically what we are seeing is that both concentration profiles uh, add up to 1. So basically the spectra would be of two species which interconvert. For example, could be a, a indicator at, at different pH values. 
So then we're going to plot it. And then what we are going to do here is full spectra. We are going to broadcast again. So we are multiplying the pure spectra with the first column of the pure spectra matrix times the first row of the concentration profile. And then it will we will add up the second column of the pure spectra multiplied by the second row of the concentration profile. So if we execute this, we are going to get a large matrix. It's basically the size of this matrix would be 701 times 20. So it's basically we get 20 spectra, each of which has 701 points. So finally, what we are going to do is to plot them. And for this, I'm making a new figure. I'm using a color map. So a color map is a, basically a matrix of points that is, is used by the plot function to, to color the lines. So now I will execute this and I will get these two figures. So the first figure contains the concentration profiles of the two species and the second figure contains the made up spectra. So basically you can see that species one, which is blue here, uh, slightly uh, sh shifts and turns into species two. What I'm going to show in future videos how to I'm using this data as an example for making a more sophisticated plotting option because for example you can see here that the blue and red orange lines that I uh, plotted initially so these are the pure spectra are hidden partially by the gray lines of the full spectra that are all the spectra in between. So the color that I chose here, for example, is basically a, a, a medium gray. I'm using the color property and I'm defining the red, green and blue values. If I, for example, did this I will have a darker gray, but I'm kind of hiding the original values. So for example, I could try to fix this by decreasing the line width of the second line, but still I cannot clearly see the blue and reddish lines. So I could try to change this, change the order so that the pure spectra are plot ah, no. So if I do this, it's kind of working, but it's not choosing the colors I wanted. So there are ways of fixing this, but they require a little bit more programming. So what I'm going to show in, a, in later videos, and that's why I introduced this data, is how to make a fancier, more sophisticated plotting function, which will also serve as an example of how to separate your code into functions. So in this video, the main, the important part was the broadcasting operations that can be, as you can see, can be used to generate quite complex data with very few lines. So I hope this has been useful. If you find it so, please like and subscribe.